Hello and welcome back. We mean business today. Glasses are out and everything. We mean business. I've asked you guys on Instagram to send through any questions that you may have on my life and what you want to know about me um, and a bit of a get to know me session. So grab a drink, grab a coffee, grab an energy drink, grab a tea, grab a kombucha. I don't care, grab something and let's get started. Mm, just hits the spot, you know? Okay, so I've got quite a few questions to go through, but I thought I would just start with some little quick fire ones to get us going. Um, some simple get to know me's. So, first off, we have got, how old are you? I am 23 years old. My birthday is 25th of April, 2000. I am a 2000 baby. Yeah, I'll be 24 in April. My birthday is actually Anzac Day, so none of you should forget my birthday now. Who was the last girl you texted? Was my best friend Kristen. Dogs or cats? Dogs. All the way. Dogs, dogs, dogs. Cats make me feel really anxious. I never know what they're going to do, what they're thinking, um, or if they like me. Whereas dogs, I feel like they give you a pretty, pretty clear answer straight away. Favorite movie, TV series right now? Because I'm in prep, every time that I go to eat a meal, I literally sit down and watch the TV and like no one can talk to me. Don't talk to me, don't look at me, let me eat my food and watch my show. At the moment, I am watching Gilmore Girls just because I feel like it's a real comfort, homey kind of show. Before that, I watched for the 10,000th millionth time Suits. Also love that TV series. I really like Power. Um, if you haven't seen that already, you definitely need to watch that. What else? Friends, obviously, I feel like that's a given. And Snowfall is actually a really good one as well. But okay, we're gonna go into some other questions um, and I've got quite a few to go through. So, we will start with some of the ones I got through Instagram. Um, what books are you keen to read on Kindle? So at the moment, I am currently finishing the Akatar series and I'm currently up to the final book that she's got out at the moment, A Court of Silver Flames. I'm pretty much halfway through and I started reading, I don't know, three days ago, so I'm loving it. The books I'm keen to read on my Kindle, I really want to read Crescent City because that follows on from Akatar and I also want to read the Throne of Glass series as well. I really want to read that. But steering away from Sarah Mass, I want to read Fourth Wing. I've heard so many good things about that. I always used to think I didn't have time for reading or I didn't have time for downtime, but now I literally treasure it. And I don't know if it's because I'm in prep, it's just something that I really look forward to. I've been really loving it. If anyone has any recommendations, please let me know below in the comments um, about what books to read next. Yeah, I'd love to kind of dip my toes in other genres as well. So let me know in the comments. Please do not give me any spoilers to Akatar or I will murder you myself. <laughs> How did you start your coaching business? So my coaching business, if you don't already know, is Mainstream Fitness. And I was really, really lucky to have kind of fallen into this business itself. So when Brad and I first started dating, he was already doing online coaching on the side as a bit of a side hustle, just to help people out and to kind of get something going. So the foundations for the business were already kind of set. And from there, I've just kind of taken over and added my own little touch to it and just made it more of a community based thing and just grown up and now it's my little baby so um yeah i didn't necessarily start my own coaching business he asked me he said look like you're studying exercise sports science food science nutrition like this is something that you're really good at um people always ask for advice anyway on instagram so like why don't you just join forces with me and we can do it together and he kind of like taught me the ropes and showed me the basics and all of that and then from there I've kind of just taken the reins and have taken over. Um, what do you think your first meal post comp will be? This is a really tricky question. <laughs> I genuinely have no idea. I have no idea. At the moment, pizza, burgers, chips, but I honestly have no idea. I've, I don't know, it could honestly be anything. I don't have anything in particular. There's lots of things that I've kind of seen on Instagram and whatnot that I'm like, oh yeah, I really want to go there, but nothing in my mind that is clear of like where exactly I want to go first straight away. Dream holiday destination. There are lots of places that I want to like tick off my bucket list. I really want to see New York. Um, I've been to America twice as a kid. I was really fortunate enough that my parents took me twice to America, um, but we never ventured to New York. So I would really love to see New York. Um, I've always loved the idea of going to Canada um, and seeing snow and being in that kind of atmosphere. I also recently really wanted to go see the Netherlands. I see so much stuff pop up on my Instagram. It's just incredible. Like it literally looks like 
someone's painted a picture, that's what all the videos look like. So I would love to see the Netherlands. Um, and I'd also love to go to Tokyo and to soak up that atmosphere and culture as well. So no like dream holiday destination, but there's definitely some on my bucket list, that's for sure. Biggest challenge in life to date. Wow, that's a big one. Um, I would say biggest challenge. Probably personally self-doubt. I think self-doubt has always been one of those things that's not really held me back, but it's definitely gotten in the way of some things. It takes me a little bit longer to do the things that I actually want to do just because I have that residual self-doubt. So I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges in life that I've had to date, which if that's my biggest challenge in life, like I'd consider myself pretty damn lucky. Um, but yeah, I really haven't been through anything traumatic or anything like that. So I am quite lucky in that regard. I've always grown up with having everything that I needed, everything and more that I needed, to be honest. I never went without. Um, and yeah, I honestly think that would probably be the, one of the biggest challenges. So just overcoming that self-doubt and then just, I guess, believing in myself and steering clear of the nine to five job that I didn't really ever feel like I was meant for and working for someone else and just, I guess, working for myself. Um, I never really saw myself as that person that was gonna go and work for someone else for the rest of their life. So I think stepping away from the idea that I had to be working a nine to five in order to be successful, I think that's probably also stems from the self-doubt and just overcoming that to be able to actually do everything that I wanted. Um, I'm gonna go into some of the anonymous questions because some of these are interesting. This is probably a good one to go on from what we've just spoken about with self-doubt. Have you ever dealt with imposter syndrome and feeling like you're not good enough for the industry? I wouldn't say not good enough for the industry. I definitely think I am fully equipped to do everything that I am doing within my business, within my space. Like I said, I am studying exercise, sports science and food science nutrition. So I've definitely got the education behind me. I always do my own research as well. I do add a lot of value to the industry that I am in and to the girls that are within my space. Um, but I definitely do or have still struggled with imposter syndrome, especially starting out. Um, within the coaching space. I think it's something that again just comes from lack of self-confidence and lack of ability to trust myself in what I was doing and the protocols I was taking and the steps that I was making within my coaching business. But even just in everyday life, I definitely have struggled with imposter syndrome before. I Google what imposter syndrome is so I can read it out to you all. Imposter syndrome. So, imposter syndrome, the persistent inability to believe that one's success is deserved or has been legitimate, <laughs> legitimately achieved as a result of one's own, own, I'm gonna start that again, scrap that, rewind. The persistent inability to believe that one's success is deserved or has been legitimately achieved as a result of one's own efforts or skills. I would say that I've definitely struggled with it before, especially in my earlier years at university um, and as well when my Instagram started becoming a bit of a bigger thing. I definitely felt like I didn't, I wasn't doing all the, the right things in terms to be where I was. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't have been where I am if I wasn't doing the things that required me to get there, if that makes sense. So I definitely have struggled with it, but I wouldn't say that I don't feel good enough for the industry because I do know that I add a lot of value to the space and to my clients and my girls. I think it's just one of those things as well that like the feelings of self-doubt and lack of confidence, it does just come with time in terms of becoming more experienced and having different experiences come your way and how you deal with them and how you respond to them is a way to show yourself that you can trust within yourself to do the right thing and to make sure that you are making the right choices and decisions as well. So I think it all comes with time. What else have we got? You've come a long way, thank you. Uh, what's the biggest factor or change that you think made that happen? I'm gonna take this in regards to fitness and health and all of that kind of stuff. I think I've always been a very disciplined person. When I was younger, I did martial arts as a kid and that in itself taught me a lot of discipline. Realizing my own self-worth. As cliche as that may sound, like I train and go to the gym and I eat healthy because my body and I deserve to be nourished. I deserve to feel good about myself. So having passion behind it definitely helps and also having a goal to strive towards. Everything I do correlates to my business and what I'm doing. So even what I'm studying at university, like 
that is a byproduct of my business and who I am and what I do. So is my gym, my fitness, my training, all of that. It, it all directly correlates to everything that I do in my life. So I think the main thing that made the change was realizing as well what didn't make me feel good. Um, going out and drinking every weekend and you know, much as my parents don't know this, <laughs> doing drugs on the weekend and stuff, it did not in any way enhance my life. And I think I started just having that mindset of, well, how does this benefit me in the future? If I go out drinking tonight and get absolutely paralyzed and come home at four in the morning, what does that actually do for me? Tomorrow, I won't be able to get up early and do the things that I want to do. I won't be able to tick the boxes. I won't be able to do any work because I'm going to have a hangover and that's not going to benefit my future at all. So I just started thinking about future self, what actions I took right now and how that was going to affect me in the future. If the result came back as well, it's not going to benefit you at all. I just, I, I decided not to do it. I think a lot of it always kind of came together. I think it was just a lot of realization that got me to where I am today. Um, and just doing the things that either benefited my future or made me feel good. This is a good one. Have you ever had therapy and do you struggle with mental health? I think everyone to some degree can struggle with mental health. It's just in different capacities and to different extents. In terms of mental health and anxiety, depression, I don't really get anxious at all. The only time I've really had, I would say, anxiety would have been probably after COVID when we were allowed to go back to university and we were allowed to be in classes and interact and all that kind of stuff. I definitely found that I knew the answers in my head, but I was too afraid to speak up about them in the classroom and to associate with everyone else. But I think that was honestly just a matter of the lack of socialization during COVID um, and the lack of being in that environment of potentially being wrong and having the wrong answer. And I think it was just a natural reaction. Um, so yeah, I don't think I've ever struggled with depression or anxiety. The only time maybe I would have been not depressed, I think just struggling a little bit more would have been in high school when I was on the pill um, and I was in a really crappy, toxic relationship as a kid. But again, like, you know, I was a teenager, I was experiencing my first toxic relationship and I was just lucky enough to have my parents with me to help me through that, especially my mum. She really helped navigate me through that and gave me all the tools and resources that I needed to move past that. But I wouldn't have said that I was depressed either. So, so yeah, in saying that as well, when I was, I think, 14, 15, my mum did take me to a psychologist once or twice, I'm pretty sure from memory. Um, and yeah, I just didn't continue on with those sessions because I didn't really feel that I needed to, but it was always readily available for me as well if I ever felt that I needed that. So I was really lucky in that regard. Go-to meal. My go-to meal for prep would be a homemade pizza. And then go-to meal if out and about, probably a burger and chips. I would say, like a good gourmet burger. Yeah, my mouth's watering just thinking about it. Hardest part of prep? This is a really good question. Um, I think, you know, prep is hard. Let's just put that out there. Prep is hard, but I don't think the hard parts for me have been the training, the eating, nothing like that. I actually think the hardest part of it has been navigating my mindset around everything. I'm 14 weeks out, so now I do have a bit of a shorter fuse, and I think just navigating that. Brad and I live with other people, so also just kind of navigating how I'm feeling. So yeah, I definitely think the hardest part of prep is definitely the mindset, because at the end of the day, it is a mindset game, um, and it's all about mindset itself. In my off-season, I was doing all the things that I'm currently doing now. I'm just obviously now very, very strict with it, but I was still training. I was still training hard. I was still eating. I was still eating to a plan, sticking to calories, macros, doing all those things, and ticking off like my steps and whatnot. But I think now, more so the mindset and also just being able to openly and honestly communicate with the people around me. Being able to show a more vulnerable side of myself and be honest about how I'm feeling if I am struggling. I think that's definitely one of the hardest parts. It's not often spoken about, but like libido as well is definitely an issue. I'm very lucky that Brad is a very supportive and understanding partner. Um, and if anything, I'm the one that puts too much pressure on myself. But um, yeah, that's also another thing that's really difficult is when you are in a relationship and you're in prep, a lot of things are kind of put on hold and you know if that other person doesn't understand that then that can be really really difficult to navigate i think the communication between friendships or your partner your parents um, your housemate whatever it may be i think it's the communication around that that is difficult and 
allowing yourself to be vulnerable and talk about your feelings and what you're struggling with at that point in time is probably the hardest part for, for me personally. It's going to be different for everyone. How long have you been with your partner? So, a bit of a backstory. <laughs> Brad and I have been together for just over three years now, as in officially dating. Um, but we were best friends for three years about three years before we actually started dating. So all up, I've probably known Brad for close to seven years now, which is insane. Um, but we were best friends for, yeah, three years before we actually started dating. Um, I was dating other people, he was seeing other people, um, and we were just really, really good mates. We would train together, we would chat all the time. Um, you know, I would go to him for advice and help about some things. He was definitely my go-to person for a very, very long time. Um, and it wasn't until I had broken up with someone that obviously he was my go-to person, he helped me through a lot of that. Um, it wasn't really until then that it kind of clicked for me. But for him, he would always say from day dot, as soon as he saw me, he knew I was the one. So Ew. it's quite sweet. <laughs> but yes, we've been dating for three years, going on for this year. Will you compete again or is this a once-off bucket list type of thing? Look, I don't know yet. I really don't know. Um, it really depends on how well my body responds and how well I think I do as well. For now, I think this is more of a, just an opportunity to see what I'm really capable of and how far I can push myself. I definitely want to go and do nationals as well. I mean, like I've already come this far, I might as well stick it out for another week and do nationals. So I will be looking at doing nationals this year. In terms of in the future though, I really don't know. It just depends, yeah, like I said, how my body responds. It doesn't affect my health too much. Obviously, I know it will, but I do have endometriosis and I suffer from a few chronic illnesses, so I'll just have to see how my body holds up. I wouldn't rule it off the cards for sure, but for now, I'm just happy to see how far I can get in this prep and how well I do in this prep. Would you move to the Gold Coast, Queensland? Yes, I definitely would. But in saying that, I think I would also like to experience living in other places in Australia because Australia is so beautiful and I've only seen a snapshot of it. You know, I would definitely like to explore a little bit further before kind of making a decision on where to move and live. And I think after this year, Brad and I definitely will move. It just depends where. I don't know. We will see where the future takes us, but I would definitely move there temporarily, even if for a year, or even, you know, six months, or whatever, just to experience it. But I think long term, I don't know where I want to end up. I definitely want to experience more of the world though. Do you want kids eventually? Yes, I would like kids. I think the idea of kids is definitely something I see within my future, especially with Brad. I just don't think anytime soon. <laughs> when I was younger, I always kind of saw myself as a younger mum, so like 25, 26. Um, but I think now that I see the position I'm in and the business that I've got and, you know, I'm only just going to finish uni this year, I want to be able to explore, I want to spend time with Brad, I want to be selfish with my time with Brad as well and experience a lot of that with just him before we ever look at having kids. Um, so probably like early 30s maybe I would say I would like to look at having kids, but again, it depends what kind of happens. Do you have any regrets in your life? No, I don't think I have any regrets only lessons. <laughs> um, there are definitely a lot of things that I would do differently. So yeah, I wouldn't say they're regrets. I would just say they're definitely lessons that I have learned from, but also those lessons that I've learned from have shaped me into the person that I am today. And I think without those lessons, I would have done them anyway. So <laughs> I think they were necessary for me to do some character building and to really find out who I was as a person, where my morals lie, and I guess the kind of person that I wanted to be. So yeah, no regrets in life, just lessons. Do you actually like prepping? Look, every day is gonna have a different answer. Some days I'll be like, fuck yeah, like I love ticking the boxes every single day and doing all the things. And some days I will tell you that I straight up hate it. I think for me, it's not that I, it's not that I hate prepping. I think it just comes down to this prep is extremely long. You know, it's a 35 week prep for me. We're taking an elongated approach just because of how my body is. And 35 weeks is a long time to be dieting. It's a long time. That's eight months in total of dieting. <laughs> it's nearly a year. So it's 
definitely difficult in terms of the length and duration of things, but I'm 19 weeks into this prep and I've got 14 weeks left. So I am well and truly over halfway now. Um, and yeah, some days I love it, some days it definitely is a struggle. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't see myself doing anything else or anything different. I think I was always meant to give this a shot, give bodybuilding a go. It definitely does take its toll though. There are some days that are more difficult than others. <laughs> a woman's cycle versus training ebook coming soon. Well, it's definitely something that I have wanted to do for a while. Um, I just need to get cracking on it. <laughs> I definitely know there's a demand for it. So stay tuned is what I'm gonna say. How do you find the motivation and self-control to how do you find the motivation and self-control to show up every day? Any tips? I hate to break it to you, but I am not motivated every day. I really am not. Um, it definitely comes down to the discipline that I have within myself and the consistency that I also have as well and that I have showed myself over time and over many years that I am capable of showing up every single day and ticking off the boxes. Um, tips in regards to showing up every day would be prove to yourself that you can be consistent. You need to develop that self-integrity and you need to be able to do what you say you're gonna do. As soon as you say you're gonna do something and you don't do it, you've just let yourself down and you're going to dwell on that until you do it. And then that's just gonna feed into everything else. You know, I think you are what you say you are and you are what you say you're gonna do. And if you don't do those things, then you're just proving to yourself that you aren't true to your word and you aren't going to see things out when you set a goal for yourself. So I think it really comes down to, if you say you're gonna do something, fucking do it. Um, and develop that self-integrity. It's gonna take time. You're gonna stuff up, you're human. There are going to be days where you let something slide or you know maybe you give in to that self-control and you kind of lack that willpower some days. It's gonna happen. Again, you're human. Um, but I think it's about not letting it get the better of you and just to start again at your next possible opportunity, if that makes sense. Um, but motivation definitely comes and goes at the moment. She's low. <laughs> so it's definitely just for me now about thinking about the long-term goal and where I want to be and what I want to achieve for myself. I think it's really just about focusing on your future self and the things you want to achieve and the things you want to be able to say you've done and are successful for. They would be my tips. Um, but also as well, in terms of showing up every day, set yourself a plan, set yourself a goal, definitely set yourself small goals as well to break up that bigger goal because that's one of the biggest things in terms of motivation is if it's a big goal like lose 10 kilos or you know finishing your uni degree or getting promoted, they are big goals and they are not going to happen overnight. Like you need to be able to set yourself smaller goals in the interim so that you can still feel that tick of approval that you're getting one step closer to your your goal every single day and that will help you as well to strive and continue going if that motivation is lacking because you're still seeing some form of progress so make your goals measurable and make sure that you can track your progression through that way how do you manage work study life gym balance it's definitely taken some years of practice that's definitely something I'm going to say. It doesn't come overnight. Like I've said before, nothing happens overnight. This is all years worth of progressively doing one thing more each day and keeping a routine. Um, so managing you know, work, study, life and gym, it's definitely one of those things that I have progressively gotten better at. There used to be a time a couple of years ago, especially when I first started doing online coaching, that. I had quite a big imbalance with you know uni and work itself. I would either be pretty much 95% in one thing and then 5% in the other. So I would either really prioritize work and the business and then my grades would drop or it would be the other way around and I'd really focus on my grades and my exams and getting the study done that then my, my work and business would drop. So I think now I've pretty well nailed, I don't wanna say pretty well nailed, I feel like that's really tuning my own horn. But like I've definitely gotten a lot better at juggling those two because they are probably the two biggest things in my life that I have always struggled to balance um, because 
end of the day, I'm doing a double degree and that in itself is a full-time job. Um, it takes up a lot of my time and I have to be on campus, I have to be present, I have heaps of different things that I need to be doing for that. And then also I have to show up for X amount of people every single day, every single week and provide them with everything they need as well so that they can achieve their goals. So I think I've definitely gotten a lot better at managing the two, but it's just come down to trial and error, what works best for me. Also just assessing and evaluating as well, like how do I work best? When do I feel my best? And when am I feeling most productive? And really just tuning into what works for me rather than going against everything that doesn't work for me and then just going, fuck, you know? So I think it's really about understanding how you learn, when you best utilize your time and going with that. And if you feel like you're a morning person and you focus better in the morning, you're more productive in the morning, get all your work done then and then schedule in everything else around that in the afternoon. So, you know, program your gym in the afternoon and vice versa. If you think you train better in the morning and you work better at nighttime, then do that. I mean, God, Brad is a night owl. I am the complete opposite. Get me to about like 10.30 p.m. I have nothing left in the tank. I, my brain is complete mush, but he's the opposite. So he will work from about I don't know, 8 p.m. to about 2 a.m. That's his work hours, that's when he feels most productive. For me, I actually feel like I'm most productive from about 12 p.m. in the middle of the day after I've had some downtime for myself in the morning. This is while I'm on holidays, by the way. When I'm at uni, it's a completely different story. For me at the moment, like working 12 to about 5.30 p.m. before I go to the gym works best for me. So that is when I do my big chunks of work. So I think figuring out when and where you work best and working with that, do what works for you. But yes, it's definitely taken a lot of time in terms of juggling the balance between all of it. And it's definitely taken me lots of years to be able to do so. But planning, please, if you are someone that goes to uni and you want to have all the things, you can have all the things. You can go out and still enjoy time with friends and family and have that balance. Plan everything. My goodness, before you go back to uni, sit down, write out everything, all your due dates, write out when all your classes are. Get Google Calendar, oh my God, please get Google Calendar. Write out what you are going to do every week. Go in and block out the times that you don't have available throughout the week before the week begins. Block all of that out and then work everything else around that. Work the things you actually wanna do around those blocks and then you can still have it all. That's literally what I do is I, I plan, I plan, I plan, I time block and I stick to my schedule, especially while at uni. I'm definitely someone that works better when I have more on my plate. Sounds ridiculous, I know, but when I'm at uni, I'm actually a lot more productive in all other aspects of my life and balancing it all because I know I only have X amount of time to do this and I only have X amount of time to do this. So I am more productive in those hours compared to when I am on uni holidays and at home working because I've got all this free time. I struggle to stick to the schedule a little bit more when I'm at uni and I've got to worry about my clients and my work and my business and social media and assignments, exams, um, papers due, gym, training, all that kind of stuff. I know the time restraint that I have, so I am more productive within those hours that I have dedicated to each thing. I feel like this is a really broad question. What do you think your purpose specifically if being, hang on, English? What do you think your purpose specifically if with being an online coach? Okay, I didn't read that wrong. It was worded very poorly. I think for me, it's definitely about helping women prove to themselves that they are capable of doing the things and empowering them to make a change. In terms of like online presence and social space, um, also goes into my coaching as well. I think it's also about, for me, bringing women together and empowering them to harbor safe connections with others. I think a big thing for me and my purpose around being an online coach definitely stems from all of the experiences I've had over my teenage years with my health um, and you know, birth control, coming off birth control, endometriosis, chronic illnesses, all those kinds of things and navigating that while trying to train, be as healthy as I possibly can. I definitely think that is a main purpose of mine as well is educating women around me of all of these things and helping them directly through their training, nutrition, all that stuff as well. I definitely think that even though the experiences I've had in regards to my health over the, the past six years, even though they have been difficult, I still think I had those experiences for a reason and that reason is to help other people through that as well. This is an interesting one. What are your insecurities? I feel like that's one I actually have to think about. 
Hmm. I actually don't know. I don't know what my biggest insecurities are. I feel like I'm pretty secure in a lot of the things that I do and who I am, which has taken a lot of time and a lot of building to be able to get to a point to be able to say that. Um, you know, when Brad and I first got together, I was definitely a very insecure person just because I didn't know who I was, what I wanted to do, what I was here to do as well. Like, I just, I didn't really know who I wanted to be as a person. And I think over the last couple of years, I have definitely found my purpose. I've found what I'm good at. So yeah, it's taken me a long time to be able to get to that point, to be able to say that, like, I'm not really insecure of anything. Anyway, that is all the questions that you guys have asked me. Thank you so much for everyone that has sent them through. Hopefully this has given you a bit more of an insight into me, who I am, some of the things that I've been through as well. I would love to do a couple more of these in the future. So if you have any other questions that you would like answered, drop them in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next vlog. Bye.